Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. I am Meredith Banka. I am the founder of the Psychic Gurus, and I'm trying to see if I am indeed streaming live onto Facebook. Hopefully I am, and we'll have you all hopping in here in just a minute. Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm glad to be here. We're just going to give a few minutes for people to join. I'm going to copy the link um, for this live, and I'm actually going to post it over in the events um, just in case somebody is actually um, watching there instead. So let me just get that posted. Some of this stuff you just can't do until you um, are going live. So <laughs> one of the downsides, I suppose, is like you can't share the link of where you're live until you're actually live, right? So I'm gonna turn my volume down there and see that we've got a couple people jumping in here with us. So if you're here, I'd love for you to just drop in and say who you are and where you're from while we have a couple more people joining in, I hope tonight, or maybe catching us on the replay, but I've got some great stuff to share with you all tonight. So welcome, welcome. This is Home-Based Business 101, and I am Meredith Benka, the founder of the Sidegate Gurus. I'm a wife and a mom, and I'm a proud business owner. My husband and I are both self-employed, and we have been for many, many, many years, but prior to being self-employed and running my own business from, well, right here in my home office, I actually was a marketing executive for a publicly traded company, and I spent the majority of my professional career in public company sales and marketing, and then found myself um, with a brand new baby and not wanting to work 80 hour weeks anymore. So maybe you can kind of identify with that as well. So that's how I got to this opportunity of becoming a coach and helping people like you open their own businesses from home, get their side gigs going full time, and really to find the success they're looking for. So we're headed into, and what I want to talk about tonight, we are headed into one of the biggest times of the year for promotion pretty much for the majority of businesses, especially if you offer any kinds of products or services that people may be gifting or that they may want to purchase for themselves. There's some pretty crazy numbers out there that talk about how much, what percentage of consumer dollars are actually spent in November and December. And it's insane. I mean, for some, for some businesses, it can be 90% or more of their revenue. For others, not quite so much. It really just depends on your type of business. But no matter what kind of business you have, the holiday season can be an absolutely fantastic time of promotion for you. But a lot of business owners get a little bit freaked out around holiday promotions. And let's face it, we're all small businesses. And no matter how well we do, our advertising dollars and our marketing dollars are never going to be as big as the Targets and the Walmarts and the Amazons and the Macy's of the world, right? So we've got to find a different way to connect with our audience. We've got to find a different way to promote ourselves and to get really the impact and revenue that we want to have in our business. So again, if you're joining me here live, I'd love for you to just uh, jump into the comments. Let me know who you are, where you're from, and what kind of business you have. It's really fun when these uh, home-based business episodes can kind of be a little bit more interactive, and I can provide you some guidance uh, live here in real time, which is fun too. But let's get started. Let's talk about promotions in general before we talk about just specifically holiday promotions. Any time that I'm going to get ready to promote something for my business or a client's business and help them through the development of what that promotion or that campaign, as we like to call it, is going to look like, we go through the same process every single time. And this is not a process that I created. This is a process that was created way back, I believe, in the 30s or early 40s by a gentleman whose last name is McCarthy. And they call this the four P's of marketing. It, it really is kind of the standard for how to put together a solid marketing campaign. And it hasn't changed in all of those years because the theory still holds true no matter how you choose to promote, the strategy for developing a solid promotion stays the same. So the four P's of, of marketing are product, uh, price, place, and promotion. So that's product, price, 
place and promotion. So let's see who's joining us here live. We've got Troy. Hey, great to have you here. And Ellie, awesome to have you here too. Uh, you've got an online store. Yeah, so you're definitely headed into this time of year. And I know Troy's got a great online business too. She and I have chatted quite a few times and she's doing awesome things as well. So this will be right up your alley. So product price place promotion. You probably already know what your product is. Or if you have a you know, a group of products, then you need to decide for this particular campaign, what is the one thing that you're going to promote? You know, if you have an online store, are you going to just promote a discount on a certain day? Or are you going to promote a certain product each day, you know, kind of like a 12 days of Christmas and countdown, something along those lines. So first thing, you've got to pick your product. With your product, you need to know your attributes. You need to know what sets it apart. You need to know why somebody wants it. You need to know, you know, really why is somebody going to pick your product over somebody else's. You really do need to know that. Hey, Patty, welcome. Welcome. So glad you're here too. So product, that's your first P. You've got to know what that is and you've got to know why somebody would want to buy it. Price, you've got to know what your price is. And because we're talking about promotions, usually that means some kind of discount, promotion, freebie, BOGO, something along those lines. So how are you going to price this product for your promotion? How are you going to price the product for the promotion? Do they get something free? Do they have to have a code? How is that going to work? And if you're managing your own online environment, then you've got to make sure that whatever you're using can handle that sale. You know, so if you if you want to give a promo code, like make sure that your checkout page can handle the promo code. I mean, this is kind of some of the basics, but if you're doing this for the first time, you got to make sure that you have that in line. So you got your product, you got your pricing, you've got your place, because that is where you're going to make this offer. Highly, highly likely that it's going to be one of three things. Well, really one of two um, if you're running a business from home. The first is highly likely that you're going to obviously use da, 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 any kind of online means, right? Whether that's going to be your own website, whether that's going to be Facebook, TikTok, some form of social media, highly likely that that's going to happen. The next thing that it's really likely that that may happen, here's my guy <laughs> here to teach some marketing to all of you. I'm all wet. Are you from the trampoline? Yeah. Okay. Well, can you take the dog and this let is me finish? And this is our dog. <laughs> you guys. It's, it's been it. quite a day, let this me tell you. Emergency dental visits, missing okay, school, okay. all that. Good so, so see you later, alligators. Mama. Yes. I lost some cell plates. Okay, go on, please. Yes, you please. may take the dog with you, please. Take the dog. Okay. Working from home, <laughs> right? All of them working from home. It's how we roll. And I love it. I love it. So I, I hope you don't mind getting to meet my family as I get to know you um, over, over our different sessions and things like that. I kind of feel like you get a little window into my life and um, that makes it kind of fun. But anyway, oh, hey, Karen, thank you. Glad that you're here. And Sean is here too. You guys are um, definitely in the Marshall family club that's for sure but anyway okay so back to what we were talking about there's going to be two major places where you're probably going to have the best opportunities to promote your small business during the holiday season and that's going to be somewhere online your website social media um you know those are going to be the two mainstays the other one that really pops up at this time of the year for people that are in small business is events we have tons of opportunities for events and now events have been kind of interesting for the last 18 months, but I'm seeing in my community anyway, a lot of events coming back. For those of you that are makers, for those of you that have physical product that you're offering, there are a lot of great opportunities to promote your business at an event. So we're gonna dive into each of those, both online and event, um, in a little bit more detail here during the, our time together tonight, but that's your place. So you've got your product, you've got your price, you've got your place, and you might be doing both events and online, or you might be saying to yourself, I should do an event. How do I get that started? I'll tell you here in just a second. And then the last one that you have to come up with is the actual promotional campaign. So how are you going to do the promotion? What does that look like? How are you going to get the message in front of your audience so that they can take advantage of the special promotion that you're offering? And we're going to go over that one in detail as well. So I can help you with the last two. You've got to really figure out what your products are and what your pricing is and how you want that to work operationally in your business. 
So let's talk about events first, okay? I'm gonna close the door here for a second too. Um, let's talk about events. I cannot tell you how many events I have done. I actually used to own an event-based business and I love it. I love events. I love getting out. I love meeting people. I love sharing with them, hearing their story, helping them. Events are amazing for home-based businesses. Whether you are in network marketing, whether you have your own business, doesn't matter. They can be tremendous if you have a few things in place for them. And I've got my notes here. So I'm going to go over how you can have a successful event. First of all, when you're picking the event, so you can either create your own event or you can participate in one that already exists. If you haven't done events before, my suggestion would be participate in somebody else's event first before you try to do your own event. Because when you do your own event, not only do you have to market the event, but you have to actually do all of the other work as an attendee at the event. So you're kind of doubling down a little bit. When you attend somebody else's event, they're going to get the people in the door for you. And you can really concentrate on not having to drive traffic to the event, but on having a great display, on having a great offer at the event. But picking your event is really important. I have, I have done some doggy events. Oh my gosh. Have you guys ever done an event and you were so excited about it? And then you get there and you kind of look around and you're like, Mer. you know, not very many people, just a whole bunch of vendors trying to sell to each other. Those can be a real bummer. So when you are thinking of the event that you're going to pay for usually to be there, sometimes just, you know, 10, 25, 50 bucks, other times thousands of dollars, depending on how big it is, ask some really good questions of the event organizer. How many people are we expecting? How are you promoting the event? Are you selling tickets or is it free to get in? Is there some kind of swag bag that I can put something in, right? What are the rules of the road of the event? And kind of interview the different event, I guess I would say organizers, and see if you're getting into a good one. Ask if you can talk to a vendor who's done the event before. One of the most successful events that I ever did for my business was actually an odd event considering the audience, but it turned out really, really well. It was a gymnastics competition in a small town in Idaho, but the, it drew an audience from nine states. And these were all moms and daughters. And I, and I work in the health and wellness industry in my network marketing company. So I had so many offers for them, beauty products, skin products, health products, you know, great, great audience. There was nobody else there that was offering the same things that I was. So I had exclusivity and there were only about 10 vendors there total, but there was this captive audience. They had to stay at this event all day long while their child was competing in the morning and then competing in the afternoon. And I thought to myself at first, the gal asked me to do it as kind of a favor to her. She needed another vendor. And I thought, okay, you know, she's been a, she's been a good customer of, my, customer of mine and I, and I love her business and I can't support it um, with my own kids going to her gym because it's about 90 minutes away from my house. So I thought, hey, okay, I can support her by being at her event. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So, and I did it for, I think, three years and it was a great event. So ask those questions about the event itself, okay? Then I want you to really think about your setup. I've been to a lot of events where you get, they're usually going to give you a certain amount of space, right? Like a 10 by 10 or something like that. Maybe you get two of them. If you have, you know, bigger items, whatever, figure out what your space is going to be. Do not put up a table and then sit down behind your table with this huge, big display in front of you. Get out in front. Think about how it's going to be welcoming. What can you do to really make the display pop? and look excellent because the reality is there's probably going to be somebody else at that event that is selling something similar to you. So how do you really be the one that has the best candles or the best jewelry or the best whatever it is you offer? So how can you stand out and practice your setup? 
put it up, put it together, take a look at it. If things are flat on tables, if they're in baskets, if people can't pick them up and touch them, it's gonna be a little bit harder. So if you haven't done your setup before or you haven't done it in a while, set it all up, make sure that you have everything you're gonna need. And in that setup, I always took with me kind of a, a event toolbox. So I always had some string, I always had some tape, always had a, like a stapler, just kind of all the supplies that I might need to maybe jerry rig something at the event to hang up a sign or banner. And if you can have things that are visual, not just everything down, but have some backdrops, have some signage, have you know some, some fun things there for people to see and know what it is you're offering, because they're just going to be walking by and you're trying to catch their eye really quickly. So maybe you've got before and after pictures of somebody using your product. Maybe you've got results. Um, you know, of, of your product that you can show. Maybe you have bigger blown up pictures of it, something along those lines, big signs that say what it is and why it's different. So really concentrate on your setup. Next up is going to be have some kind of what I would call eye candy. So have, we've talked about offer structure in Home-Based Business 101 before, and this goes back to your four P's of marketing. For this particular event, what are your products going to be? What's your low ticket offer? What's your medium ticket offer? What's your high ticket offer? So it is great. I used to, uh, first business I ever opened was jewelry. I made handmade um, gemstone beaded jewelry for years and years and years and, and sold it at all sorts of shows. And when I would do shows, I would always have like a, a low cost item out front in the front of my space. And it usually do like little stud earrings that I had purchased that I would just resell because people are looking for $3 and $4 stocking stuff or type stuff. And they would come in and they would look at those. They were also really kid friendly. So the little girls would come in and they would look at those. Now mom's eye is caught over here by something else and they would stay longer. So what kind of low price, low ticket item can you have that's going to bring people in? As I moved into more of the wellness arena, arena, excuse me, I started offering samples. And you know, one of my business partners and I, she, we did tons and tons of events, and we would offer tasters of the different products that we had. We had some some skincare that we would allow people to utilize and, and touch and feel. And we would stand right at the front and say, can I interest you in this sample? Can I interest you in this sample? Have you ever tried a breathable barrier mask? You know, we would, we would say these things and people will know what's that. So be out front, be engaging, have a low price something. And if you don't have something that people can sample or try have something that people can sample or try. Many people um, at small events like this have food items. Maybe you make, you know, gourmet salsa or sauces or, you know, mustards or something like that. Absolutely have samples. You'll have to see, you know, what you need as far as a food handling license and the legalities of where you are. But those are some great ways to get people coming in and really uh, creating, a, you know, interest and energy in your area okay the next thing that i'm going to suggest if you're going to be doing an event is that you have some way of collecting people's contact information and i have done events both ways i have done events where i didn't collect information and events where i did collect information as a small business owner one of the things that you want to continually be doing is building your list of contacts and connections so if you can give away something give away a prize basket give away um, something that people want in that prize basket put a 25 dollars amazon gift card and one of your items so that people will enter and you can get their contact information Yes, they may just be giving you the contact information to win the prize, but that gives you the ability to communicate with them again and again and again later on and also have some kind of a show special. I have a friend that has sold um, Cutco knives forever and she does a show special and her show special is always good until Tuesday after the event. So then on Monday, she takes everybody's emails that she collects and she sends them a reminder and says, I just want to remind you, it's not too late to get the great pricing from the XYZ event, but you've got to take action by you know midnight tomorrow. Here's the link to order. How many orders do you think she gets after the fact, just because she's reminding people of the special that she had? So you need though to collect that information upfront at the event. 
don't let that pass you by. Sometimes event organizers will actually give you a list of attendees. So that's another great question to ask them as well. And you can go around and meet other vendors if you have a minute and collect their info too. Then the last thing that I would say with your event is you're going to need to buy into the idea that you've got to have some follow up to do. People need seven to 14 exposures to you. They need to be at the point of being ready to buy typically before they're going to hand over that cash. So you've got to buy into the idea that not everybody that you're going to do business with is going to happen in the moment of that event. And we're going to talk about follow up both from events and from your online marketing here is our third topic tonight. So I'm just gonna check in. And for those of you that are thinking that you might be doing an event, drop in some questions here if you've got them around how to make an event work for you for the holidays. And I'll be happy to answer them at the end of our, our live here tonight. So secondly is how do I produce and, and create a promotion and a campaign online? Well, you go through those same four P's, the product price, place, and promotion. You figure out what that's going to be, and then you need to design your campaign. When, when you're doing an event, you can kind of hone in on the audience. You know, maybe you um, sell makeup and beauty products, so it would make sense to do a women's show right? My friend that does Cutco, she does a lot of like outdoors shows. She does a lot of fairs, like county fairs. So you can put yourself in front of the audience as best as possible. But when you're doing something online, you can be even more highly targeted because you are controlling who's going to, to really see what you've got. So who is your audience for this promotion? And do you have an existing audience? Do you already have an email list? Do you already have a Facebook group? Do you already have a following on Instagram, TikTok? You know, are you on Clubhouse? Where can you start planting the seeds that you're going to be doing this promotion online before the promotion even starts? Give, you know, insider access, give hints, communicate with your audience that this is coming. It's coming. It's coming. You're not going to want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Okay. Again, whether that's through email or posts that you're doing in your social media, the next thing that you're going to want to do is come up with what your content plan is going to be. And if you're thinking about a black Friday promotion, and I was going to have my, my calendar out here so that we could actually look at the dates. So let me open it up to, I do have a paper calendar. Don't laugh at me. It really works well. <laughs> Keeps me on track. So Thanksgiving is on the 25th. So Black Friday is on the 26th. Today is the third. So when do you want to start your promotional campaign for, let's say that is you're going to kick off your holiday promos with a Black Friday special. Then you're going to want to have a Cyber Monday special on the 29th. Small Business Saturdays on the 27th. So pick which one of these things you're going to ride the tide of because there's already a lot of promotion out there around that. And then figure out what you're, what you're wanting to do in December. Are you going to do a different promotion of a different product each weekend? Are you going to offer the same special all season long, but just continue to promote it with different value propositions? You've got to decide that before you can start building that campaign out, before you can start figuring out your communication. So let's say, for example, that you sell online courses and that you're going to offer special pricing for Black Friday weekend and Cyber Monday on your course. I would start communicating the value of that and what's in the course and why you're excited about it, testimonials from people who have taken it. I would start doing that a couple weeks before Black Friday to really prime my already aware audience. I would prime my already aware audience so that once the special hits, they're looking for it. That's one of the ways that you can stand out among the just crazy amount of advertising that gets slammed into people's inboxes. The other way that you can really stand out is if this campaign that you're building and this content plan you're putting together is multifaceted. So how can you communicate with your audience? Do you have their phone numbers? Can you, can you text message? Can you broadcast? Do you have them in a Facebook group where you can send everybody to an, an event, just like you guys are on this one today, where I invited everybody in the group to come to the event? Can you do that? Do you have that option? Do you have their email addresses? So how can you get in front of them and make sure that it's multifaceted? One of the great things that you can do is you can send a text message that says, hey, first name, just dropped an awesome offer in your inbox. I wanna make sure you got it and that you're not missing my Black Friday special. Can you let me know if you got the email? 
they're going to go and they're going to look for it if they are liking to buy from you. So really prompt people, really get them ready to buy from you up front. Also in this content plan, it cannot be about you. It has to be about the value proposition that you have for people. So why does this audience that you're marketing to need what you have? both positively and because they have a pain point. So where do you relieve pain for them in their life? How are you helping them? How are you getting them to recognize that that's a problem that they have and that what you offer is a solution to what they're looking for? That is the paramount of all of your online communication and your inbox communication, whether it's on messenger, you know, anything else, right? That is what you've got to do. And this is all warm audience tactics. You will then take the same stuff if you're going to advertise. If you're going to put you know, ads on Facebook, if you're going to advertise on any of the social media platforms where you're paying, or if you're going to be driving traffic in any way, you're going to want to make sure that you are really clear with what the value proposition is for your offer and really clear on what the value is and really clear on what your discounts are or the promo actually is show your stuff to somebody that doesn't isn't so close to it because if if you do that then they can say oh i don't understand this right sometimes we make these promotions and things way too complicated you've got to make it simple attractive and easy to understand then pre-build that content plan schedule those social media posts build those email campaigns in your autoresponder if you have that and make sure that they are scheduled and ready to go Get that done in like the next 10 days, knock it out so that once the marketing starts, you can then be in response mode instead of build mode. Too many times we're trying to build the, the, the plane or you know, fix the plane while we're flying it. And in this case, that's not going to set you up for success because once your campaign launches, people are going to start responding to you. They're going to have questions. They're going to have a problem ordering. Even if your ordering system is flawless, People aren't going to get it. They're going to have questions. Oh, well, I wanted this, but I need that or whatever it might be. And also make sure that you've got your post-purchase communication plan in place as well. So if somebody buys that online course from you, if they order that item, are they getting a thank you email? Are they getting instructions? Are you following up with them? Are you letting them know when it's shipped or is your partner company doing that? Make sure it's really, really clear for people and that you're communicating that to them up to the point of sale and after the point of sale. So pre-build your communication campaigns. There isn't any reason that you need to be sitting there writing the email right before you send it. You can have all of that done in advance. And then the last thing I want to say about online events, and again, if you guys have questions about these, please just drop them in the comments. But one of the things I want to say here is be ready for the responses. Be ready to answer all the comments that you get. Be ready to, you know, to get the responses in email, however you're going to get those, and be on top of it and have a backup plan. What if you're the only person that can do that and you happen to come down with the flu over that weekend? How are you going to back yourself up and not miss the opportunity for some pretty significant revenue over that weekend or that promo period if something goes awry. So think about having a backup plan for yourself to make sure that you can really deliver for your customers, right? So is, is your site backed up? Is your payment system tested? All that needs to be done before you even launch it. Now, the last thing I want to talk about tonight when it comes to holiday promotions and really what you need to know, which was the topic of, of this particular um, episode of Home-Based Business 101, you also need to follow up you need to follow up. So that follow-up is gonna look a little bit different based on whether you're doing some events or whether you're doing something online. With events, if you do develop that list of people who came by, tried your sample, joined your email list, you know, got their contact because they entered to you know, win your prize basket, you need to make sure that you're following up with them. I would follow up with them day of. If you're doing a two or three day event, put in place a campaign that you can immediately send to people, email, text message, whatever it's gonna be, and say, hey, thank you so much. It was great meeting you today. Uh, you know, It was great meeting you today. 
here's the information that I, just in case you missed it, or you didn't pick it up, or you didn't have a chance to shop with me today, here's where you can go and learn more. Here's a story of somebody who used the products. And I would be sending contact information to them every day for about a week following up from that. Make sure you've got unsubscribed, make sure you've got a way for them to bail out if they're not interested, because we don't want to market to people that aren't interested in what we have. We don't want to, you know, be knocking on a door that is never going to open. So give people the chance to opt out if they don't want in. That's fine. But the people that do open those emails, the people that do click on the links, the people that do visit your websites, they will eventually buy from you. That event might have been the first or second time that they've ever even seen what you have. And remember, people sometimes need to see things seven, eight, nine, ten times before they're ready to buy. Maybe they were thinking about a couple options. So you've got to have that in place. And same thing online. In your warm audience, where you know, you're communicating with the people that are already on your list, you need to make sure that you're communicating with the people who have expressed interest. So if you've sent emails and you've sent text messages, can you see who responded? Can you see who opened it? Can you see who clicked on links that are in there? Those people are now in a, a different level of interest than anybody who just didn't even look at the email. And technology can help you differentiate those. So you should be using a system that allows you to do that. So now you can see, oh, wow, you know, Julie here, she clicked on the link about these particular pair of, you know, amazing active wear leggings that I'm selling. Cool. Now I can send her another different response or better yet, if I've got her phone number, I can text her a quick message. Hey, Julie, saw that you were checking out the link on the leggings. Just wanted to make sure you didn't have any questions here to help you. Hope you're enjoying the holiday season. Take care, Meredith right? So you can get really, really personal by having the ability to drill down into the information. Make sure you're doing that. Make sure that you're following up afterwards. Are you going to extend your sale? Are you going to let Cyber Monday creep into Tuesday just because you want to make sure that people didn't miss it? Or are you going to run another promo the following weekend? Figure out what those are every time, product, place, price, promotion, product, place, price, promotion. You should be able to answer those for each thing that you do and, and have it just every single time, every time you do any kind of marketing, you have the answer to those four questions and you've got your follow-up system in place. Now online, if you're going to a cold audience, meaning you bought leads, you're buying traffic, you're running ads, same thing. Your goal there is lead gen and, and sales. So if you generated the leads, but they haven't bought yet, they should be dropping into some kind of campaign that's going to let that continue for them. Okay. That's going to let that continue for them. So I know I've shared a ton of information with everybody here tonight, and I'm super, super excited about this topic because it is such a great opportunity for home-based business owners and for people that have side gigs this particular time of year. There's so many different venues for us to be able to share our business with people that don't always exist at other times of the year. So that is really, really cool. I did have one thing that I wanted to share with you guys that I'm personally excited about that I'm getting ready to launch for my Black Friday. Um, and I thought that I would go ahead and share it with all of you now so that you could actually see what that is. So I'm gonna share my screen and this is actually ready for all of you now. If you want to get involved in this, you can. So if you've liked jumping into the different lessons that I have here on Home-Based Business 101, if you think the information that I provided to you here tonight, or even in some of the other courses and classes that I've taught, or even the podcast, if you were listening to that, and you're like, I really like, think this is valuable and this is helping me move forward with my business, then I would love for you to join me. I do short week long marketing challenges. I just finished one up with a group on Monday night, but for this December, I am actually offering the Psyche Gurus marketing game plan challenge for free. So my Black Friday promotion is not even to sell anything. I want as many home-based business owners as possible to jump in on this five-day marketing game plan challenge because the people that have taken this course so far this year 
are raving about it. They are loving what's in there. They're loving how it's helping them move their business forward. And it's really great information. So my intention is to help people succeed in building their businesses from home, because when you can create your own economy, your life really, really, really starts to change and incredible things happen. And the more people that I can help have that experience, the more people that can to live the life that they want and, and create the things that they want and have the financial freedom that they're looking for. So all you have to do is just go to meredithinka.com slash free challenge. I'll drop the link um, in this in this live when I'm done. And all you can all you need to do is just go here and then click on yes, please save my seat. And it'll bring up this little form for you. You just fill that out. This gives the details of the challenge. Who's it for? What are you going to get from it? What's included in the five-day marketing challenge? You actually get a copy of my ebook, which is called the Side Gig Guru's Marketing Game Plan. And during the challenge, we will actually go through that ebook step-by-step. Step. We build not only your vision, but we build your offer, we build your audience, and we build your promotional plan. And that can be for the entire year of 2022. So if you struggle with marketing or if you want to improve your marketing, this is a massive opportunity for you to be able to do that. And I would love, love, love for some of you to be the first to register for the challenge. It starts the week of December 6th and uh, all the details are here. So I'm just gonna drop the link into the live and let all of you guys check that out. You're not going to want to miss it. That's the only time every year that I am gonna offer this for free. It's gonna be at the holidays, my gift to you. The rest of the year, there's a fee for the challenge. So if you wanna get in, if you wanna check it out, if you wanna spend a little bit more time coaching with me, I would absolutely love to have you there. Absolutely. So good luck with your holiday promotions this year. I hope you find some amazing value from this class today. And I also hope that you have success in whatever it is that you're promoting for this holiday season, because this time of year is an absolute blast for small businesses. And if you just have a plan, work the plan, stick to those four P's of marketing, I guarantee you, you will find success. So thanks everybody for being here at Home-Based Business 101. Have an awesome night and we'll see you again soon. Take care.